In your opinion, is the amount of magic, mystery, and wonder left in the world rapidly diminishing? Is there any left at all? And I, I, that, that, which reminds me of, of one of those beautiful poems by someone like G.K. Chesterton, which begins, Romance is Dead, um, and was all about how it wasn't. I, I think everybody who arrives in the world um, gets to see it for the first time and gets to see it and imbue it with magic. I think it's our job as writers um, to make it perhaps a little bit more magical, but only by taking the things that people would see usually and perhaps um, not look at and not examine and not think about and just make them look at it a little bit more. I loved when I wrote Neverwhere, the idea that people would go to... <laughs> people would, would go to London and just be on the underground going somewhere and they'd see Earl's Court or Knightsbridge or whatever and get a little frisson of magic. Just yeah. go, yes, that's, oh my God, there's that place in that book and this thing happened and it would just be a little bit more cool and magical. Let me tell you something that happened to me a few days ago which is I think telling, the, I'm, I think we're both saying the same thing, which is that I was on an airplane very early in the morning, the kind of airplane where it's very dark and everyone's gonna go right to sleep and the man next to me said, can I have your blanket? And I said, sure. And he took his own blanket and my blanket and he put them both over his head like a ghost costume. <laughs> yep. It was all I could do not to go, woo! <laughs> um, so no, I don't think the amount of mystery and wonder is left. <laughs> <laughs> and we're both, we're both parents, and being a parent is a constant pop quiz on the world, and you realize you have no explanation for anything that is going on at all. Yep. I loved, the thing I loved best about being a parent to small kids was the amount of great stuff I stole from my kids. Have you started stealing anything from Otto? Yet? Oh, shamelessly, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's a tax write-off, come on. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he still mixes up sweet and dry vermouth, so what am I going to use him for? Um, yeah. He, when he was very, very young, this was really when he was hardly making sentences, he said to me, I'm scared every day. And I said, are you scared a lot? And he said, no, but I'm scared every day. And I thought, that is the history of the world. <laughs> you know, so I said, me too, sorry. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel, when I had a child, I began to think, you know, I'd kind of, not that I was such an activist in my head, although I have a strong sense of wanting to repair what appears to be such a broken world often, and want to do everything I can to move that conversation forward. But it's not like I thought I was gonna do it all in a few years or something. But then when I had a child and he began asking me questions about things that he saw and injustice just around him, even everyday injustice, and um, I realized, oh, I, I think I pushed the gothic novel ahead about half an inch. <laughs> you, the rest is up to you, you do it, kid. Um, and it's, ast it's astonishing how much mystery and sinister magic there is in the world. It doesn't yeah. seem to be diminishing. I loved um, your book, The Dark, which I got to do the audio Thank book for. You. Yes. Um, which is, which I, I assumed was an Otto-related book. Um, well, I, actually, Otto, my son, uh, I, when I was starting The Dark, he was reading it uh, with sketches by Mr. Cawson, and... Um, he said, you know, I'm not afraid of the dark. And I said, oh, you know, person who sleeps with nine nightlights. Um, <laughs> you could find a contact lens in his room. <laughs> and um, I, I said, I didn't realize you were uh, not afraid of the dark. And he said, I'm afraid of things that might be in the dark. <laughs> and I thought, well, that's very sensible. 